Hey there, AP Environmental Science class. We're moving on now to chapter 18, where we're going to talk about solid and hazardous waste. Now, there are about 68 slides to this uh, chapter, so instead of uh, doing two uh, parts, I am going to break it into three smaller parts here. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to manage, uh, and I think a little bit easier for you guys to sit through as well, all right? So there will be three parts to this chapter. And here comes chapter, uh, here comes part one of chapter 18, again, solid and hazardous waste. So we start off with this core case study talking about uh, cradle to cradle design. The traditional product uh, life cycle of any products that humans create uh, starts at the beginning, which we call the cradle, and then through disposal, which we call the grave. Well, the new approach is a cradle to cradle design. This means that we reuse parts over and over in other products. We never have a grave, okay? We don't dispose of the products. What we do is we cradle them, use them, and then use their, uh, use their uh, any, any, any waste, cradle it again into the beginning and use it in some other product. This is the thinking of solid waste and pollution as potentially valuable materials and chemicals. So instead of thinking as waste, uh, as being just waste, we're looking at that waste as some having, having some value to it. And this actually mimics nature. In nature, if you remember, uh, thinking back to uh, the previous uh, chapters we did in the fall, we remember that nutrient recycling, right? Nature really doesn't have waste. Uh, you notice here we have plant up. Oh, we have plants that grow, all right? Uh, you have the uh, primary consumers eating those plants and the secondary uh, tertiary consumers will eat the uh, primary or secondary consumers. Then we have waste. Then we have decomposition, right? The bacteria, you have worms, you have fungi, right? That, that, that take that waste and turn it into biological nutrients that then the trees and plants use and the whole cycle starts over. So that's what we need to start doing with our products, our human-made products. We need to start using or at least mimicking nature. So you'll notice we have manufacturing that produces a product, like a chair. We use that product, right? Then we need to return and disassemble, uh, disassemble that product to its technical nutrients, right? The, basically the components of the chair. And then you can use those components again in manufacturing to maybe make another chair or maybe make, to, make some other product. So again, it's this idea, this cradle to cradle design uh, that human waste, solid hazardous waste, again, whatever it is, doesn't have to be waste. That we can think of that waste as just more nutrients, in this case, technical nutrients, right? That we can put back into the product design line and hopefully reuse those products and this way uh, eliminating or reducing uh, the waste that we produce as humans. So what environmental problems are related to solid and hazardous waste? Well, solid waste contributes to pollution and includes valuable resources that could be reused or recycled. So again, these valuable resources are in the waste. We need to uh, find ways to extract them. Hazardous waste contributes to pollution, natural capital degradation, health problems, and premature death. So solid waste is piling up. And again, in the natural world, there is virtually no waste, right? The, the, the earth system has evolved, and that includes the plants and animals in it, uh, to basically use all the waste. There virtually is no waste. Then, of course, us humans show up, uh, and we start producing all this waste. So uh, what type of solid waste do we have? Well, we have industrial solid waste. Uh, this will come from mines, from farms, and from industries. And then we have what's known as municipal solid waste, or MSW, and that's garbage or trash. That's what you and I are producing uh, on, a, on a daily basis uh, in our homes uh, and in school here. All right, the MSW, the municipal solid waste. Much of the waste ends up in rivers, lakes, oceans, and natural landscapes, of course, uh, which is obviously a problem. So, for instance, single-use plastic bags, 100 billion used in the U.S. each year, take 400 to 1,000 years to break down, okay? So those plastic bags, um, and I know we've had some issues, uh, some not some issues, but some debates here uh, in Westchester and over in Rockland County at supermarkets, use them, not use them, et cetera. Uh, but this is uh, some of the arguments for not using these plastic bags, right? Uh, they take up to 1,000 years to break down, and they actually never disintegrate completely, okay? Uh, so they're not biodegradable. They block drains, they block sewage systems, and they kill wildlife. Uh, uh, and any discarded plastic threatens wildlife. So where does our municipal solid waste end up? Well, in most cases, it's buried in landfills or burned uh, in more developed countries. 
open dumps in less developed countries, okay? So here in the U.S., we either bury them in landfills or we burn them uh, in less developed countries. Uh, the solid waste is often thrown into us open dumps uh, where basically uh, anything can happen to it. Uh, the waste can seep into groundwater. Uh, the waste can, uh, the people can go walk over these dumps, get the hazardous waste into their bodies, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, another case cut study here. This is about solid waste in the United States. So the United States is the world largest producer of solid waste if you if you if that's if that if that if that stat surprises you I would be surprised okay because I think you know what goes on in the with the with the uh, with the affluence here uh, that that we talked about here here in the US uh, and about how uh, you know we are a fairly uh, a richer society uh, and as a result we use a lot of stuff and so we're producing a lot of solid waste uh, and the highest in solid waste per person industrial waste represents 98.5 of all solid waste so uh, again it's not necessarily you and I in our daily uh, uh, routines uh, uh, but again, all the industry here in the U.S., mining, agriculture, producing uh, a good chunk of that of that waste. Most waste breaks down very slowly. Lead, mercury, uh, glass, styrofoam, and most plastic bottles actually never break down completely. So uh, what we're looking at here is uh, this is basically... So we have composition of U.S. municipal solid waste on the left side and where that solid waste goes after it is collected on the right side here. So uh, U.S. Congress has actually exempted uh, the, uh, the disposal of these chemicals from a lot of regulations. So uh, there isn't a lot of regulation when it comes to disposing uh, uh, chemicals and, and, and other types of municipal solid waste. Uh, but you'll notice here, so paper, 27%. Food, 14 and a half. Yard trimmings, 13 and a half. Uh, plastics, metals, okay? So these are your breakdowns for where the uh, U.S. municipal solid waste, and again, this is the stuff that we're producing in our homes, that we're producing in schools, in our office buildings, et cetera. Uh, where does it go? 53% into sanitary landfills, 34% gets recycled, and 13% gets incinerated, uh, which is burned. So what we need to do is, obviously, we need to take this 34% chunk and try to increase it as much as possible, uh, and that's where we need to head over the next uh, 50 to 100 years. That's why you're taking this course, uh, and hopefully uh, you will be uh, one of the leaders if you do go into environmental science in maybe moving our uh, municipal solid waste collection away from the landfills, away from incineration, and more towards that recycling and reuse. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, for a good part of this chapter. Hazardous waste is a serious and growing problem. So again, we're talking about the first part talked about solid waste wasn't necessarily hazardous, like papers and plastics and things like that. Now, now we're going to talk a little bit about hazardous waste. So hazardous or toxic waste threatens human health or the environment. Toxic, corrosive, flammable, can undergo violent or explosive chemical reactions or can cause disease. All right. These are all kind of the categories where hazardous waste uh, would be put under. Some classes of hazardous waste, organic compounds, toxic heavy metals, and radioactive waste are three of the classes of hazardous waste uh, that we have out there. So uh, what we're looking at here is again, and again, talking about this stuff, um, most Congress has, again, uh, kind of not regulated uh, a lot of these chemicals that are being disposed. Uh, so that may be somewhere where we can kind of, as uh, citizens, maybe kind of push Congress to maybe try to enact some uh, regulations uh, to help with the disposal uh, of a lot of these toxic chemicals. So uh, what are harmful chemicals in your home? Cleaning disinfectants, drain, toilet, window cleaners, spot removers, septic tank cleaners, paint products, okay, uh, are toxic. Toxic. Dry cell batteries, glues and cements are, are toxic. Pesticides, uh, ant and rodent killers, flea powders, they are all toxic as well. Uh, gasoline, motor oil, antifreeze, battery acid, break and transmission fluid, okay, all, uh, all hazardous and toxic waste. And again, you can pretty much dump this stuff right into your garbage. Uh, there's really no regulation on, on, on the disposal of this stuff used around your home. Uh, so again, this is a serious problem. It's a growing problem, uh, and it's something that we need to look at, and uh, politicians need to look at 
at this as well. And that's where we come as the grassroots right at the bottom here to try to push the politicians to enact some regulations uh, to try to get some of these chemicals, uh, uh, the disposal of these chemicals more regulated. Uh, so here's a case study, e-waste, an exploding hazardous waste problem. So e-waste is electronic waste, like cell phones, like computers, okay? Uh, obviously, this has been growing in it and expanding over the last 20 to 30 years. Uh, electronic waste is the fastest growing solid waste problem in the United States and the world. Again, driven by increasing sales and short life cycles, right? You take that iPhone, uh, that Samsung phone, it's really good for about two years and they come out with a new one. And so you discard the old one, right? Well, we're having, uh, uh, this stuff is now beginning to pile up. Leading producers of e-waste in the United States and China. Again, no surprise there. Recycling has increased to 30% in 2010, but we need to uh, get that recycling up more. Also shipped to other countries for processing. Workers, children exposed to toxic heavy metals and chemicals. Uh, but what's interesting is that this e-waste contains valuable materials that could be recycled or reused. Think about it. You throw away an, an iPhone. Well, there's components inside that iPhone that could be used in, in other phones or a computer. You throw out your desktop computer. Well, again, there's there's components in that computer that definitely could be used in, 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 in newer computers, right? So this is where we have to start looking at that cradle to cradle uh, type of design where we make a computer, then we don't throw it away. We if you, if it comes old, you break it apart, use its materials in a, in a, in a, in a, in a newer computer, uh, and then all that e-waste doesn't end up in a landfill either here in the U.S. or in some underdeveloped country where then uh, children or workers can be exposed to uh, the toxic metals and chemicals in this waste because, again, a lot of the landfills in our uh, underdeveloped countries are not secured landfills. They're open landfills, which means anyone uh, can just walk on them. And what's happening, actually, in some of these underdeveloped countries is because because a lot of this e-waste has valuable materials, you have children 10, 11, 8 years old rummaging through these landfills looking for this e-waste to sell. Okay, but what's happening is they're then getting exposed to all these toxic chemicals and they are getting diseases. Okay, so we need to uh, figure out a better way, a better way to recycle our e-waste because, again, our electronic waste is uh, uh, very quickly uh, becoming a major, major issue. So. How should we deal with solid waste? Of course, that's the big question. Sustainable approach, we need it, all right? Approach to solid waste. So again, we can produce less of it. We need to reuse or recycle it. And if we do have to dispose of it, we have to safely dispose of what may be left over, okay? So those are the three uh, three parts to the sustainable approach to solid, solid waste. So we talk about waste management. First, again, just produce less, right? then reuse or recycle, and then finally safely dispose of what is left. So waste management focuses on controlling waste in order to limit their environmental harm, but does not attempt to reduce the amount of waste, okay? So that's uh, something you got to make some distinctions uh, with these terms, okay? Waste management focuses on controlling the waste to limit the harm, but does does nothing to uh, to reduce the waste. So waste management is basically a reactionary uh, a, a type of thing here where we have this waste, We'll focus on controlling it, limiting the environmental harm, but we're not going to uh, attempt to reduce the amount of waste being, being, being produced. Waste reduction does just that, however. That reduces less solid waste uh, and makes more of reusing and recycling. We also have integrated waste management, which is a variety of strategies for management and reduction of waste all put into one. Uh, this is a kind of a, a look at uh, what we're talking about when we talk about integrated uh, waste management management. Uh, so once again, uh, we we need to reuse this waste, okay? So again, we can either uh, uh, reuse it or recycle it. Uh, we can uh, compost it, all right? Or again, we can uh, do some putting in landfills uh, and incinerators as well. So you can see here, raw materials, processing and manufacturing. We have the products, waste generated by households and businesses, food and yard waste. We can compost into fertilizer, all right. Uh, any other waste, paper, metal, glass, plastic, we can reuse or recycle to again put that back up into the uh, back up into the uh, chain here. Then, all right. If we do get some hazardous waste, okay, we need some kind of hazardous waste management to get rid of it. And then our remaining mixed waste can either go into landfills or can get burned. Okay. So this is kind of your integrated uh, 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 waste management, very integrated, in very similar to the integrated pest management. If you remember from a couple of chapters ago when we talked about agriculture, okay. We need to kind of 
kind of use all of these uh, with most of us trying to be in the green here. But obviously, if we, you know, there's going to be some toxic chemicals, there'll be some waste that we can't reuse, we can't recycle. Uh, so then we need some uh, ways to either manage the hazardous waste or again, use uh, some landfills, some incinerators. So we're not saying we're going to get rid of landfills and incinerators 100%. But the point is to reduce the amount of waste going uh, into the landfills, into the incinerators, into your hazardous waste management by using, uh, reusing and recycling of the material. Again, more of that that cradle to cradle uh, idea with products rather than the cradle to grave uh, idea, which uh, we do uh, more so now. So the four R's of waste reduction, I'm sure you kind of know them uh, here. Refuse, don't use it. Reduce, use less of it. Reuse, use it over and over. And then recycle, which converts used resources to useful items uh, and buy products made from recycled materials. And then, of course, we have composting using bacteria to decompose biodegradable waste. So, waste. so I would definitely uh, memorize the four R's of waste reduction. Refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, you may very well need to use them uh, on a test question coming up either on one of mine tests or on the AP a test uh, coming up in May. So there are six strategies, all right? We can change industrial processes to a limit or reduce use of harmful chemicals. We can redesign manufacturing processes to use less material and energy. We can develop easy to recycle products. We can establish that cradle to cradle responsibility. Again, not uh, disposing of, of, of the products, but using their components into other products. We can eliminate unnecessary uh, packaging and we can use fee per bag waste collection systems. Again, that fee per bag waste collection systems, meaning the more waste you have, the more money you have to pay, right? So if you pay, uh, if you have less waste, you pay less money. If you have more waste, you pay more money. And that could be an incentive for people to uh, figure out ways to have less waste. So Again, uh, what should we do here? All right, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, uh, the, what they recommend is on the left here. We should reduce first. We should reuse second. Recycle and compost third. Incinerate fourth. And then only as our final, final step, if we can't incinerate it or recycle compost, reuse or reduce it, then we can bury. But again, it's a reverse pyramid, meaning the bury should be the minimum amount the reduce should be the biggest thing that we do. Unfortunately, we're kind of a little bit lopsided here. You'll notice the, what the uh, U.S. National Academy of Sciences uh, suggests should be the, the final thing to do with our, with our solid waste. We're doing as our first, right? 67% of the waste we are burying, all right? So that's not good. Now, the recycled compost, all right, that's not bad, all right? Kind of up to the top here. But look at, look at incinerate, number three. Incinerate needs to be number four here. And then obviously reuse and reduce. Uh, we haven't really begun doing that uh, enough. So that's where we need to head as we head through now uh, this 21st century. We have to really start reducing our use of, of, of waste material or, again, really reuse it. That's that cradle to cradle approach uh, that we really need to start uh, figuring out how to do. Recycling, guess what? We're not doing a terrible job with recycling and compost. Recycling, composting has been going on. I mean, recycling in, in my towns now has been going on for 30, 40 years. So well, recycling has been has been good. That's that's a that's a positive. That's a that's a something that we should be proud of. OK, that's a good thing. Uh, but again, we need a little bit more of that. And then we really need more of the reuse and the reduce. Again, more of that cradle to cradle uh, uh, type of type of approach to, to waste management. Okay, so that's going to be the end of part one. All right, we will come back and start part two, uh, where I will begin talking about why are refusing, reducing, reusing, and recycling so important. So come back for part two, and we'll talk about that.